Hi and welcome to A British Audio File. For those of you who don't know me already, my name is Taryn. I'm going to start by just sharing with you today a little bit of a personal insight. Since starting this channel around 18 months ago, it's fair to say that I've reviewed plenty of different types of gear, but I've also been on a little bit of a personal quest to see how speakers around the 2K price point perform. And the reason was that my Proact Response One SEs, the current version of those, retail for around £2,000. I've owned my Proax for about 22, 23 years, and I wanted to find out how my Proax competed with modern speakers. There have been some very good speakers through here. It's fair to say, though, that the Proax have held up very, very well. In fact, there's only one speaker that I felt that was a little bit better than my Proax in terms of overall performance, and that was the ATC SEM 19s, although I didn't feel that they were significantly better, not enough to justify switching over. And there's certain strengths that Proax have that appealed to me over the ATCs as well. When I reviewed the Amphion Argon Ones some months ago, that's a speaker that retails for 1200 pounds. And it got an outstanding because I was surprised as to how close it ran my Proax, bettering it in the base department, not as good in the mid range and the highs, and the overall performance perhaps fell back from the Proax a little bit but it ran it closer than it had any right to for a speaker at £1,200, £1,300, I think, in the premium finish. So what I'm going to review today is its big brother that retails for £2,000. Could this be the speaker that I've been searching for, something that could perhaps blow the Proax out of the water? Let's find out. The Amphion Argon 3S is retail for £2,000 here in the UK, available in a satin black. There's also a standard white finish, or you can have the waveguide in white. For a 200 pound premium, there's a real worn-up veneer available as well. If you're feeling creative, you can choose from various colored grill options. The cabinet is constructed from MDF and measures 380 by 191 by 305 millimeters, weighing 12 kilograms. That's 15 by seven and a half by 12 inches and 26 pounds. The front baffle features a 165 mil or six and a half inch aluminium cone midwoofer protected by a removable mesh grille. The 25 mil or one inch titanium dome tweeter is housed in a waveguide, now in its fifth generation. Amphion have been refining the design for over 20 years. Instead of a port, there's an aluminium passive radiator at the back. The high quality Argento speaker binding posts are taken straight from Amphion's top of the line studio monitors. They can accommodate banana plugs and provide great contact pressure when used with my spade connectors. There's also an adjustment to attenuate the treble by 1 dB. When I reviewed the Amphion Argon ones, I went into quite a bit of detail about the design philosophy and the overall engineering principles involved. So I'm not gonna repeat all that here. If you're interested in that, please check out that review. What I will do is summarize what essentially is the same about the two products and what is different. Let's start with that six and a half inch or 165 millimeter woofer. So the woofer is bigger. Instead of five and a quarter inch or 135 mil, we have six and a half inch, 165 mil. It's still an aluminum cone woofer. And these type of materials are suitable for using for low frequencies because they're very stiff and light and they can deal with large excursion. What they're not particularly suitable for is mid-range applications, which is what is being used in here. Now, Amphion have got round this by setting the crossover point relatively low, actually very low for a two-way design at 1600 hertz. That again was the same on the Argon ones. I'll explain how they're able to do that in a second. But by having the crossover point set so low at 1600 hertz, there are a couple of distinct benefits. You don't have the woofer playing at a range where it starts ringing. That's the problem with metal cone drivers. If you play them up too high, they have that ringing sound and very nasty breakup notes, which you want to avoid. They've got round that by having the crossover set at 1600 hertz. The other benefit of having it set so low is it's out of that critical region between 2000 and 5000 hertz. Normally in a two-way design, you'd expect the crossover to be somewhere between two and 3000 hertz. By having it out of that critical region, that's where our hearing is most sensitive. 
and the crossover is the most complex and troublesome part of any speaker design. Setting it lower avoids that issue. Let's take a look at the crossover itself. Like the Argon ones, it's a minimalist affair with a few number of parts. It's likely to be a first order or a second order filter on the tweeter and something similar on the mid woofer. And that means a more gradual roll off slope. Amphion can only get away with doing this if the two drivers are well behaved. You're not having to correct electrically for problems in the mechanical response of the driver. And also the two drivers have to be a good match to each other. The natural roll off slope of the tweeter has to be close to a mirror image of the natural roll off slope of the mid woofer. The benefit of this approach is that you've got fewer components in the signal path, in particular capacitors and inductors that add distortion and cause phasing problems, timing issues. The 25 mil or one inch titanium dome tweeter is identical to the one found in the Amphion Argon ones. It's housed in a waveguide and the benefit of the waveguide is twofold. It acts like an acoustic amplifier, increasing the tweeter's output and extending its response. That's why it's able to cross over at 1600 Hertz. It acts on the same principle as those old gramophones that you had way back in the day, if you've ever seen one of them. The other benefit of the waveguide is that it controls the directivity of the tweeter, narrowing its dispersion in particular around the crossover frequency where it needs to match the dispersion characteristic of the mid bass woofer. And that results in a much smoother off axis performance, giving you a wider sweet spot, much more even tonality around the room and much easier speaker placement. Perhaps the biggest difference between the Argon 1 and the 3S is the deployment of a passive radiator as opposed to a regular port at the back. The benefit of a passive radiator is that it allows the base to extend down a lot further and it doesn't have any of the problems with port chuffing noises that you can get with a poorly designed port. The downside is that it's a lot more expensive. Let's get straight to it. The Amphion Argon 3S is one of the most transparent speakers I've heard to date. Dare I say, a touch more transparent than my Proact Response 1 SEs. Let's start with the bass. It's super fast and articulate. This thing starts and stops on a dime and it can keep track of fast percussive transients, no problem at all. It has good extension for a stand mount speaker because of that passive radiator. I think the minus six dB point is down at 36 Hertz but it isn't the last word in base weight. Certainly won't compete with the Bucar S400s in base weight, but they're a bit boosted in the base. I think Amphion were going for a much more linear response. But it's still fair to say that it's a much bigger speaker than the Amphion Argon 1s and my Proact Response 1 SCs, and I expected the differential in base weight to be greater than it was. The mid-range is super clean. The leading edges of notes are crystal clear and the decay structures are ever present. It's as clean as any speaker I've heard around this price, including the ATC SCM 19s. But the three S's do lack a little bit of body in the mid range compared to the ATCs and certainly compared to my Proax, which are a touch slower, but certainly have a fuller, more harmonically rich mid range, giving more variations in texture and tone in the mid range and a slightly more natural presentation. There's a little bit of sparkle on top. I think you'll get the airiness and the extension that you desire without any listening fatigue. Compared to my Proax, I don't think there's a huge amount of difference in terms of refinement, although I think sibilance control is a touch better on the Proax. That might be partly due to the fact that the Amphions have a little bit of leanness in that lower mid-range in particular, so your attention is drawn more towards the higher frequency range. As you'd expect from a well-sorted out speaker, the sound stage is wide, it's way beyond the speakers left and right, it has good soundstage depth and the location of instruments within the soundstage is also well placed. Now, if you think I'm being a little bit reserved here, you're probably picking up on the fact that I think my Proax have a wider soundstage, a deeper soundstage, more space around the instruments and more precise imaging, but that is a Proax thing. What the Amphion Argon 3S has going for it is a much wider sweet spot if you're sitting off axis and also if you're walking around the room there's much less tonal variation. That's a key characteristic of a controlled directivity speaker. It was a characteristic of the Amphion Argon ones as well. The three S's don't do quite the same disappearing act as the ones, that's to be expected. The acoustic center of the two drivers in the ones is closer together, there's less cabinet, and that's the reason why they have an even better off axis response. 
Let's talk about the comparison with the Argon ones. I spent quite a bit of time doing A-B comparisons between the two speakers. From the bigger speaker, I'd expect greater dynamics, more bass extension, that was there. I'd also expect more bass weight. There was more bass weight, it's just the differential wasn't as big as I expected. I've already spoken about that. What was most noticeable was the difference in the mid-range clarity and the cleanness of the bass as well to some extent. Now this may be a little bit of a surprise to some because essentially all you have in the 3S is a bigger version of the same cone. But the cone doesn't have to work as hard and that's why there's less distortion. The only thing I'd say in the Argon 1's favour is that extra bit of distortion at the lower frequencies and in the mids manifests itself as a little bit of extra warmth which gives the ones a little bit more of a neutral tonal balance. The Amphion Argon 3S's are quite forgiving when it comes to room placement. I think they're also going to be forgiving when it comes to different types of rooms from an acoustic standpoint. They're a controlled directivity speaker and that's a key characteristic of that type of design. They're best suited to small and medium sized rooms but you can get away with placing them quite close to walls and that's because they have very fast and articulate bass. By placing them closer to walls you get a bit of boundary reinforcement, a bit of a bass boost does come a little bit at the expense of clarity, but not as much as would ordinarily be the case. They're also quite forgiving when it comes to partnering amplification. It's a good quality speaker. So you need something like the Hegel H95 that has a very even tonal characteristic and gave a very good idea of what the Argon 3S's are capable of delivering. An alternative would be the Wilsington R8 that I recently reviewed that threw out a bigger sound stage with greater dynamics at moderate listening levels but at the expense of some mid-range refinement and top-end clarity. If you can stretch to it, something like the Hegel H190 that I'm currently reviewing gave the best of both worlds, scale, dynamics, clarity and refinement. The Argon 3S's scale up really well, sounding even better as you improve the amplification. Combine it with my Exposure 21 Pre and 18 Super Monoblocks, there's a real synergistic match between the warm sounding exposure and the slightly cool and analytical sounding Argon 3S's. Did I find that the Amphion Argon 3S's were the speakers at £2,000 to blow my Proax out of the water? Well, not quite. I'm starting to really question whether that's even possible given the number of speakers I've auditioned around this price. I may have to readjust my expectations. The Amphion Argon 3S's are comfortably one of the finest speakers I've heard around £2,000. They're not quite the bargain that the ones are at £1,200, but they more than justify their price tag. For those of you who are looking for a speaker with fast, tight, articulate bass, crystal clear mids, plenty of refinement on top, very forgiving of room placement and the acoustics of your room, as well as forgiving of partnering amplification, they should be right at the top or very close to the top of your audition list. And they get a highly recommended from this channel. So that's it from me for today. If you like this video, please hit that like button, please share it. And if you like what I'm doing with this channel and you haven't subscribed already, please think about subscribing. And don't forget to check me out on Patreon where you can check out some Patreon only videos, some consultancy services I offer, and also support me financially. But for today, for now, a British audiophile, signing off.